Life. Life is a disease. A millennium ago, a supreme necromancer was on the verge of conquering the world. But you know what they say about best laid plans. Inevitably, heroes shall emerge. So, I was made dead. Again. But what does death really mean for somebody who has mastered it? Hmm? Boredom. An eternity to ponder my errors. And how close I came to victory. I am a mortal. But when this world ends, even I will know oblivion. And so, I ask myself, will I be given another chance to rise before it happens? Another chance to fulfill my ambition? Ah, it seems that fate has smiled after all. In a world searching for gaming knowledge comes the man, the myth, a legend in his own mind, critical. Welcome back, guys and gals. Critical here. Today I'm bringing you Aratus, Lord of the Dead. Yes, it's a new game. Uh, got it up on Steam. Uh, early access came out late July. Found my and I got actually got a decent paycheck, so I decided to treat myself with a new game and it's interesting it is a roguelike rpg turn-based combat i know that's a mouthful but trust me so I, I i've been watching some videos on this but i can't get any in here so we have to start with the tutorial now i was able to show you guys the intro and I played that before the video started. And just so you guys know, I actually made it so that it wasn't as loud as it was when it played. Oh my lord. So each minion has five basic abilities. One ultimate ability. To use the ultimate ability, you have to have a special resource called Wrath. It builds up over time. Either by attacking or being attacked. Depending on the unit that you're using... And their position within the party. Certain attacks are open to them. And certain attacks are not open to them. And that's where the strategy comes in. If you move this unit forward. Could you be stopping another unit from doing something that you really needed them to do. And you're playing as an undead necromancer. Well obviously. Well, but you're playing as. Yeah you're, you were killed. You were raised. And now you're trying to take over the world. And you are building an army. And here's the cool thing. The battles that you face, the, the humans that you kill, you can take parts from them to make your minions and upgrade them. So, yeah, basically you're, you're robbing the dead bodies of your slain victims to enhance your army. So this is a little tutorial battle that they're going to have you, you run. And this is your, your basic skeleton. And I think it is level one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a level one skeleton. You can tell by its brain. Its IQ is 10 for level one. So there's your attack, your dread. Dread is um, kind of... So you have... You can either take away hit points or you can take away resolve slash sanity. And that's what dread does. It stresses the enemy. You have accuracy, how, you know, are they going to hit or not? How accurate are they? Evasion, can they move away and not get hit? Luck is the likelihood of landing critical hits, which can be important in this game. And then, of course, you have armor, resistance, block, ward. Whenever a character has at least one point of ward is hit by a magical attack, that attack is nullified. And then initiative, 
when you're when you were when are you going to move in the combat and then here's all their um their combat unassuming strikes so if you see if you look at the two yellow skulls you have to be in that position on the map and you can deal damage to the two red ones show them their place is a charge attack you move up three spots and you can push the enemy back two spots but you have to be back in one of the last two positions and you can only do it to the front two positions astounding fortitude uh, you gain six arm you're basically you're taunting saying hit me i've got my shield up embrace mediocrity stress attack links the skeleton with the target Skeleton loses 30 percent bigger your health and the target loses 30 percent 15 percent for bosses of their sanity so you give up your health to try to make the enemies insane smite as a physical attack attacks twice dealing 50 percent damage 10 plus 10 per uh per attack and you have to be in one of the front three you can only attack the front two and then shield banger stress attack deals 120 percent 23 to 25 percent damage and it costs wrath that's their their ultimate ability once again it had to be in the first three and they can and it hits everybody that's what the uh what i was talking about the the strategy and then here's our banshee and they have their attack i'm not going to go through every attack as i go to, to use them i will try to go over them but she usually stands in the back and she causes more stress than anything else but some of the things that you do will buff the enemies and you're like well why do you want to buff the enemies well sometimes you buff the enemies and your skeleton can can attack multiple times for the number of buffs stacked on an enemy if you have a certain stance up on a dark knight and you buff the enemy the dark knight attacks and does damage to them so you you cause them dread you buff them and then your dark knight will do damage to them it, it's a it, it is a a two for attack i guess the way you look at it so i can use unassuming strikes them right in the front or i can use smite and i think i'll go ahead and you well see unassuming tax ignores armor depends what you're fighting since these guys don't have any armor i'm probably better off just doing smite damage and I'll smite this guy. Break their bones. And that's you. You're a Rattus. So damage. Physical, magical damage reduces the target's vigor. Igniting a target will deal magical damage multiple times over the course of a few turns. Stress damage decreases the sanity of a target, as I already mentioned. Crush crushing a target will deal stress damage multiple times over a few turns. And critical hits by minions decreases the enemy's sanity. Enemy critical hits will increase it. Cut something else to note. If you go for like a stun attack and you get a crit, it doesn't stun them for one turn. It stuns them for two turns, which can be really cool. Okay, so now it's my Banshee's turn. Now, Soprano is a stress attack. It deals 30%, 6 and 6 damage of stress. All enemies lose 4 attack for their next action, and it does not stack. Or I can use No deal 75 percent damage 14 to 16 damage is a stress attack and it moves me forward now the one thing i really don't want to do right now is move forward i'm a little too close as, as it is and soprano is pretty good because that's going to lower the attack of the enemy and i know they're about to attack so i'd rather lower the attack of the enemy than anything else And so it debuffs the enemy. Sanity. Loss of sanity in combat can lead to various con consequences. Insanity. A negative effect that we can see in the inspiration, which you don't want, always on our side. A positive effect that strengthens the enemy, and that can be the death of your party really quick. Death. Receiving an amount, any amount of stress damage while at zero sanity can lead to instantaneous death flee from combat basically they just want to run away the cool thing is the death having that heart attack if anytime somebody else dies if their stress level is low and somebody else has a heart attack from a stress attack 
the other enemies get stressed and they can also die. You can have this wave-like effect. So now it's their attack. A basic physical attack. Fortunately, he missed. And like I said, I like smite, so I'm going to go ahead and smite oh, again. Annoyance in the world. <laughs> I have a nonchalant attitude, what can I say? And moving this target's not going to do him any good. So I'm just going to stay on Soprano and decrease his attack. You know, you can see his sanity's starting to uh, uh, to go away. He's not going to be long for this world. There we go. It's a decent attack. Soprano again. <laughs> Your cries are music to me. So that was a... Oh, and it killed it outright. Okay, so when you win a combat, you get drops from them. These parts of basically their bodies you use to build your other minions. Now, this area out here is closed because this is just a tutorial. And so it wants me to create any two minions, and that's what you do in the creation station. So you can use common, uncommon, rare, or legendary parts. You can go to the alchemy station and combine these to try to make better stuff. And right now, these are the only uh, minions that are open to me. A Dark Knight, the Banshee, which you've already seen in action, a Wraith. And look at their abilities. And so you want to try to match up their uh, abilities. Skellies are a good... Just get in there and hit them type of enemy. But they've got an attack that ignores armor and just go it bypasses the armor, which can be really important. But I've got a Banshee that does a good amount of uh, stress damage. So I'm going to create a Bride of Aratus. Let's go ahead. And so you fill it up, and that's going to take a flesh, a blood, a heart, and bones beats only for me but i'm gonna put her in the crafted it that way yes yes we know thank you very much for sharing i'm gonna put her in the back behind my banshee she's she's my full backliner she's an archer so and then i'll have a dark knight everyone needs its generals and he'll be my front lighter and these two will trade off being in the front uh now and then now, I won't have his charge unless I move all the way back. And he has a really nice uh, target. Uh, unfeeling aggression uh, can be really cool. And if you get two skeletons and two dark knights as a four-man team, they can create a lot of havoc, havoc with that. But I want to show you some combinations you can do. And we're going to do some uh, battle trying to take away the enemy's stress. So basically what's happened is you were killed long ago as a necromancer and you were buried basically. They resurrected you, but then they buried you and locked you away. Makes no sense, but it's what they did. And deep underground, humans have come down here to bust in. And that's where we're in the mines. And then you have the dwarven tunnels because dwarves were brought in to do it using slave labor from humans to actually... Uh, mine out the, the tunnels. You have mercenary barracks uh, available after release and available after release. So right now, these are the only two areas that you have access to. And so we're gonna we're in the mines. They've basically opened up my tomb, and I'm like, okay, you wanna you wanna open up my tomb? I'm gonna come out and kill you. Some enemy, enemies print unique features that either strengthen or weaken them. Okay, so this right here is a taskmaster. All right, and we don't have a lot of information on them, but I will tell you that they like to throw down traps. And if your minions move across that trap, they'll, they'll take additional damage. So if, if you're running a party that's constantly shuffling your your party, seeing one of these guys pop up is really bad. They'll also buff his his minions. He'll help buff these guys 
and make them stronger because he'll whip them into shape and and basically beat it out of them. All right, so it's my Skelly's uh, turn. I like Smite, and I'll probably just go for Smite. Something I would probably use on the Taskmaster once I reach, I'm able to attack him. But right now, I'm just going to go ahead and attack the Miner right here. Yeah, I'll go for Smite. <laughs> that, was, that was a good attack. All right. So my Bride of Arathis, Arathis, myself, uh, Chest Piercer. Basically, it's a physical attack. It deals 19 to 23 damage. Critical hit would deal 200% damage. Flames of Love, Ignition. You basically ignite the target. You have to be in one of the front three spots, and you can hit anybody in, in, the, uh, uh, anybody in the party. Overwatch. It's basically a stance. Now, you... A lot of characters have stances, and this stance is, is making the assumption that somebody in the enemy party is going to move, and when they do, you attack for 50% damage or 12 to 14 physical damage when they do it. Think of him, it's a buff. It, it buffs me and gives me four plus four attack and plus four dread until the battle ends. And then warning shot, it's a stress attack. It pushes me back three if I'm way up front. And deals 100% uh, damage, 22 to 21. It pushes an enemy back. And Rose for a Lady is a physical attack. It's basically a piercing shot that has a high chance or and inflicts a critical hit. And it does 12 to 14 damage. So it's really good, but it uses uh, Wrath. It uses 50 Wrath. So I'm going to go ahead and buff my myself. So that next turn I, I have a better chance of doing more damage. And let's see, do I want to do let's see, no. Oh, and not available in the tutorial. Oh bogus. So for right now I'm just gonna do Soprano. And weaken the enemy. So that you can live. So he had ward, so he's able to block the... Ah! Gone insane. What insanity did we get from you? Uh, Berserk. Damage dealt is increased by 25. Damage received is increased by 50. And then I... He debuffed me, and it... Negative 30 uh, accuracy, which means I'm not going to hit as often. But if I do hit, it's going to do some damage. So I... So on my Dark Knight... Heartless Slash is his basic attack. You have to be in the two front rows and you attack the next two rows. Uh, hollow Stare. It's a stress attack, which is basically what I'm doing here. Um, had to be in the first three, and I can do it to the, fir the first three. Uh, dark Tithe is a support. Moves all, de uh, moves all debuffs from the Dark Knight and then moves me back one. And then Arathis, me... I gain eight mana when he does that as well. So it, it's good for moving a character back and taking this debuff off. And then Futile Hopes, it's a stance. Each time an enemy receives a buff, the Dark Knight deals 60% damage, seven to eight stress damage to it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a stance. And in what, if the enemy doesn't knock me out of it, I will be, see, he got buffed, I now attack. I'm going to go ahead and smite this one. Very close to killing that enemy. I don't know if they're going to move. But I am going to see if I can take that enemy out. All right. Insanity. And I pushed him back. And it died. Dust. Now, I'm going to go ahead and buff all minions. Gain six dread for their next action. Oh, it's buffing me. I wanted to buff them. I don't think I have access to that ability yet. Because that's over here. I think it's no that I'd want to use. And, and it synergizes with what my Dark Knight's doing. I'll go ahead and buff. Oh. 
So my skeleton is immune to that. Something I didn't know. I just learned. All right. So now I've my stance is over, and but I can get back into it if I want. I'm gonna give a hollow stare to you and see if I can kill you outright. I took all of his uh, his stress levels completely gone now. So basically anything else I do to him is, is basically going to kill him real quick. I'm going to start working on... Ooh, my darling. Ooh, a 44 kit. Crit. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to start working on the Taskmaster. We weaken him up a bit. Stress attack on everybody. Heart attack. He's gone insane. Cowardice. Chance to flee increases by 20% each turn. And so eventually he's going to try to run away. Now, here's the bad thing. If he runs away, I get less parts. If they're beating your butt, then you'd rather let them run away than let them beat your butt. So I'm going to go ahead and hollow stare him again. I'm trying to do a stress. I'm voting a stress party. Though he, my, my skelly is a uh, physical individual. Let's go debuff your stress. That was a huge hit on and then Soprano should finish you off. And then one more hollow stare. Will that finish you? Now here's the problem with stress. If you build a stress party meaning you're, you're focusing on doing stress damage that his stress damage is gone. And there's a chance I could outright kill him instantly anytime I stress him. But the problem is I've been sitting here beating on the guy and he hasn't died yet. And that's the problem with stress. If you're doing a stress run, your enemy can sit there and say, okay, I'm stressed, but I'm not, I'm not dying My yet. Will is a tide that will wash away your pathetic so, civilizations. There, um, there are other buffs and rewards we can get. Um, architect's souls are what we need to build our graveyard up. Graveyard gives us buff and parts and stuff. Parts to craft minions. Artifacts which can increase our power of our minions or Arathas himself. Brains. I think one of the best things you get are brains. You can get level 1 through I think level 5 at the most. And what these are is you take the brain, you take a level one minion and you put a level five brain in it. It's automatically becomes level five and then you can buff that enemy back up. It's a good way to re to replenish your a high level minion. The problem is the way this game is, it's your minions really are, are cannon fodder. You just have to rebuild them fast enough. And that's where the uh, tactical part of it comes in. How fast are you losing minions? Do you have enough parts to constantly keep replacing them before you get to the point where you just can't no longer beat the boss? Now, here's a good thing to note. If you're fighting anything but a boss and you die and you bring another party, the enemies won't have healed. Bosses heal back up, but regular encounters, elite encounters, the encounters in the rooms on the, on the pathway, and we'll show you the pathway later, those don't cause you to um to have to reset and start the battle over again bosses though start all over again so i've got experience from my party and i got ooh skull fall i don't know what that is i haven't seen that yet let's go ahead and take a look at it so now artifacts so these are the artifacts these are artifacts right here excuse me and then this is a consumable item that will be used in the battle if you choose to. And this scroll is a one-time use, allows Arathus to use Skyfall and or Skullfall in combat, which means it would go here. And I've never used it, and it wants me to put it on anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, if I wanted, I could create another minion. All my minions are at full health. It's basically the easy part of it and I don't think I want to change anybody out right now you'll see all the minions as we get into it so I'm just gonna leave it sitting there 
items, ectoplasm. Oh, it's a quick list of what you have. Now, see, I have a talent point, but I can't use it because this is the, uh, the tutorial. All right, so this is the map. And we're trying to fight our way up to the boss. Which way you go? Now, I'm going to make a decision. Do I want to go over here, here and heal? Or do I want to go over here and heal? This is a sac sacrificial altar. By sacrificing a minion, you receive items and artifacts. I think I'm going to go heal, fight this guy, and hit the sacrificial altar. Knowing that I'm going to hit the sacrificial altar eventually... I need to make a minion that I don't mind sacrificing. And one ectoplasm of everything I would need to make. I think a bride would probably be my best bet. I've got two flesh. I've got more than enough blood. I've got several hearts and I've got a, uh, several bones. So the flesh is the only thing that I'm short on. I'm going to go ahead and fill that. And I'm going to design from my younger years. This guy is creepy. I'm going to go ahead and have her ready to sacrifice. So I'm going to choose my battle squad, which is this one. So you can have up to five, one, two, three, excuse me, four different squads ready for battle. And we're going to go for this fountain of restoration. I can get mana, which allows me to do stuff, which I don't have the ability to do, or heal my party. I'm going to go and heal my party, but I really didn't need to. So let's go to this battle now. Resources and magic. Now it's giving me mana, and it's giving me the ability to use uh, Skullfall, and that'll be a one-time use. Question is, do I want to use it early or do I want to use it later? Deals 10 magic damage to all enemies. Sets targets on fire for two turns. Only 10 damage per turn. Select a talent for this spot. Okay. I'm not sure what that is. But sure, why not? Say Go ahead and hello cast it. to my burning friend. Okay. Nice. Nice. I, I I get the reference. All right. So now I've got astounding fortitude, which means I'm telling them attack me, don't attack others, or embrace mediocrity, where I can give up some of my life to basically make them lose part of their sanity. It could come to that. There could be a use for that, but right now there isn't. So I am just going to smite, and I want to take. This guy has a nasty stance, and of course you know that I don't like taskmaster. <laughs> So I'm going to start working on that guy. Overwatch could be useful this time. I can see them moving. I'm going to go ahead and buff myself real quick. And then next time I'll use Overwatch. All right. Absorb fear. Support. Restores the target to full sanity. Gives Arathus mana equal to 20%. Of their stored sanity and it moves me back so basically it is i'll give them their sanity and i get mana from it no stance whenever an enemy an enemy moves the banshee deals 60 percent 1 to 13 stress damage to it i am going to do no and it's a stance now this is a one turn stance not a stance until the end of combat and it moved me back and then I'm going to do futile hopes because I'm trying to build a, a, a synergy of uh, buffing the enemies. There we go. Now you, you're seeing some of that. Uh, you're seeing some of that, that teamwork coming into, uh, into action. He buffed. It caused this one to move. She screamed because he moved. And because of the buff, my Dark Knight attacked. So him buffing is going to make uh, make this go really, really nice. Now I've got enough uh, 
uh, mana or a wrath built up, I can do a uh, shield banger. Stress attack steals 120 percent, 23 to 25 shield damage, or uh, excuse me, stress damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the entire party. Two of them went insane. Uh, betrayal, 75% to attack an ally. Nice. Berserk. Gonna do more damage, but it's gonna take more damage. And then... I can set another attack on fire. They're already burning. I don't know if it stacks. Let's do stress damage to this one. Shot, sweetie. It's a 55. Ooh, heart attack. One of them died. Nice. Oh, and he turned on his partner and attacked, which is awesome. I don't know if I want to do movement. I'll do Soprano because it'll weaken everybody. It might kill this one outright. All right, he went insane. All remaining strength at the start of each turn loses 40% of its maximum vigor, receives an extra action. So he'll be able to do two things a turn, but he's going to be losing 40% of his maximum vigor every at the start of his turn. And it lasts all combat. That's where the uh, infinity mark is there. I don't know. Do I want to hollow stare and attempt to kill or... The basic attack really is, but I love Fuel Tire Hopes. I just don't have the right minion out here. I need to get rid of the skeleton to really make this, to make this pop or replace the Banshee. But I'll go ahead and take the stance again. He's my frontliner. See, he lost a lot of health and he buffed. That buff causes that minion to take more damage. Ooh, put a trap out. So I, other traps can override it. Some things can, can do it. Now, this is where I wish my skeleton was one movement back. If I move, this guy is going to attack. But if I had the ability to charge forward and hit him, I could, uh, I can knock him out of that stance. I don't want to give up health. I want to keep it for the next uh, combat. But I'm going to go ahead and smack this guy. And hopefully, I'm going to kill him. Oh, yeah. Turn and hit your own buddy. I like that. I think Soprano is probably the, my best option. Those scream deals as a stress attack, and it moves me forward. Hmm. Does it hurt everybody? I'll scream this note with just one. Ah, heart attack, instant death. Oh, but she moved, so she, so he went ahead and attacked. See, that's why I shouldn't have done that. I want to go ahead and try to kill you outright, which worked. And he died because of <laughs> the insanity he had. That's nice. I like that. All right, so now it's, it's telling me to take talents. So I can get Spine Bomb. Aratha sets a trap at a, cho at a chosen enemy position. It explodes in two rounds, dealing 50 magic damage. I mean, there's a lot of these. Bone Spear, which does physical damage to uh, enemies in position one and two. Flaming Skull soul leech and then the they build up and get to like much better abilities ire is going for wrath and this is a really nice one where here as long as you have 75 wrath at the start of every turn your your minions will restore eight vigor that's huge if arathus has a hundred wrath all spells cost 10 mana less but not less than zero so that one I think is really important. Cars talents that are not learned cost three talent points. All units recover to full vigor and it costs 80 mana. 
So that can be like an emergency heal of the entire party, which can be really nice. Um, magic can do a lot of different things. And I don't know these yet. We're going to learn them as we go. Now, alchemy, I have seen some of it. So the amateur surgeon increases the chance of receiving parts at the end of battle by 10%. Um, calculation allows conservation of parts and items into or conversion of parts and items into mana. I would never do that. Surgical practice increases the chance of receiving parts at the end of battle, which is really nice. Increases the chance of receiving parts at the end of battle by 20%. So you can get to the point where you're getting tons of parts, which is really nice. Um, appreciator of architecture increases the chance of receiving architecture souls at the end of battle by 25%. Select bones requires talent or okay. Skeletons gain 20% or plus 20 vigor. So it doesn't work on summon minions, but it works on my minions, the one that I craft, which is really nice. Makes my skellies a better unit. Another uh, increases the vigor recover rate of minions, not in battle by 100%. Love potion gives my uh, Bride of Arathis a nice boost. All right, is there one that you want me to take or? No, it's just no telling me I can take. Secrets. And transport, uh, no, I want to get. <laughs> I'm going to crack that one as well. Messy slaughter. <laughs> okay. Don't get ahead of yourself, buddy. Is it the wraith that I'm looking for for the ability? And hundred. Oh, I think it was the not the lich. The lost soul. I've got. You have to work up to it. Like I have to debuff enemies 250 times. I'm almost to the point where I can do it and get these minions out. I have to get minions to level five. The remaining amount four. Not even close. Slay 60 enemies. Well, I'm almost to a lich. Yeah, the lost soul debuffs. There's a, it has a nice synergy with this party to uh, buff everybody, which causes the Dark Knight to do more damage. Plus, I think there's abilities that are still unlocked on my Banshee that I don't have the ability to do yet. No, it's just for the movement one. But every time they move, it's cause it causes a chain of, of damage, which is really nice. All right. Let's go ahead and now you'll see that this part of the map, this branch over here, is all grayed out. I can never take that branch because I made this choice to go this way. Here, I can choose to go this way or I can choose to go this way. If I choose to go this way, this branch will gray out and vice versa. Let's go ahead and go to the sacrifice. Uh, choose you to go here. And you can skip it or you can sacrifice. And I'm going to sacrifice. I got ear necklace plus two to resistances starting uh, turn at the second position plus one to attack for two turns stacks up to three times. That's nice. If you stay in that in that position, like my skelly seems to stay there, that'd be a really good one for my skelly. Blood diamond, plus one to block. Starting in position two, attack for two turns. Once again, same thing. Black heart gives me a ward, protect me from magic. And starting in position three, uh, plus one initiative for two turns, stacks up to three times. Etched bones, plus eight to accuracy, missing an attack. Plus two to attack for two turns, stacks up to three times. And then Ring of the Ring of the Leprechaun. Critical hits by minions and enemies deal 30% more damage. Ouch, hold on a second. Minions and enemies? So this is like a good and a bad. If they um Wow, I don't like that. I I no, I I I don't I don't want that. That No, <laughs> I do not want my enemies to do 30% more damage. Even if it means that I'll do 30% more damage. All right. So 
the ears are position two, and that's where my skeleton starts. So I'm going to give him that. And also position two. Now, once you've given these, you can't take them away. He's going to have these. And if he dies, you just lose it all. So be aware of that. Oh, that's right. I have the uh, the skin pack. I can switch skins, but not anything I'm looking for. Position three. So missing an attack. I think I'm going to give that... And I don't need to do this because it's a tutorial I'm going to. I'm going to give that to my uh, bride. So if she misses any attack, she'll buff herself. And the black heart. Is there anything else that I can make that I can, would be useful? No, nothing that works into what I was trying to go with the stress. Now, curses deal 35% damage to the chosen target and the enemy behind it. Buff. So this ghostly veil can help protect my my minions. Oh, that with my banshee could be interesting, though. The zombie is more of a physical attacker. Plus, he sends people a light. No, I think I'll stay with the party that I have. But I think that's this first video has been long enough. I've been critical. This has been Arathis, Lord of the Dead. Hope you guys have enjoyed this content. If you have, drop a like, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.